So, my name is Konstantin Oedel. Um, I'm part of the Kaliber team um, and with this project for about nine years now. Um, I dive directly into it, who we are. Um, Kaliber is a non-profit organization. Um, we are based in Vienna, focusing on street art production, um, especially in the city, but also national, nationwide and also internationally. Um, we see ourselves as a platform, so we're focusing on our festival, which takes place every year, but we also um, do other projects um, in during the year, and as I said, we have international partners, I come to that in a point. Um, first to the beginnings, um, the first year of our festival happened in 2014. It was connected um, to a PhD project of founder um, Jakob Kattner, um, who started the project um, with another colleague, Laura. Um, it was 14. I joined um, after the first festival. And over the years, um, our festival grew and grew, and more great and exciting people came to our festival, to the team, but also artists and all like particip participants and, and people involved. So, it grew and grew and got bigger and more walls produced and now 10 years pass. So this year we celebrate our 10th anniversary this summer in Vienna and we're pretty excited about that. Um, I'll give you a few basic facts over these nine years. We had like about 100,000 visitors. We used 10,000 liters of paint, paint in 13 districts in Vienna. Um, had more than 89 artists um, coming from 27 countries. So we always invite international artists. Also, like the name Cai Libre comes like from a connection to Latin America. So we always invite artists from Latin America, but also always in, um, include um, national artists. That's really important for us. Um, so what drives us? Um, the whole team came together because especially the love of street art and graffiti. Um, beside that, we're also like really um, engaged in, in creating this um, dialogue between the public and the artists and the production side. Uh, we also want to make street art more accessible in a way, um, creating it for a broader audience, especially first of all, we create these public artworks in the public so everyone can see. Secondly, uh, we try to get a broader audience by including different events. So, for example, we started to create a music festival inside um, the, the street art festival to make it more exciting for people who would normally not go to a street art or graffiti event. But now they have some nice music, maybe some DJs they know, or we also have other programs like I come to this in a bit. So best to show you what we do is to go into one of our festivals. And as I mentioned before, we have our 10th anniversary this summer, starting on the 27th of July um, and going for 10 days right now. We have also used this title, yes, for the 10 years, um, years of transformation, which helps us like reflecting about what happened over the last 10 years and also bringing this this um, kind of philosophical process into our work and um, so we themed all our years um, to the special concept so pretty interesting what we hear today um, I think about like a five minutes walk and from here we had our last festival um, it was from regeneration if you have some time, um, check it out. I can give you the location there. So let's come to um, more what's happening at the festival. Um, we start this year with an exhibition where we usually try to include in our festival. This will be based in the first district, district in um, AG 18. We have a collaboration with um, Jockey Cultural um, a Gallery from Sao Paulo. Um, we invited them here, so they will have like this um, broad variety of artists, international artists here um, in autumn, because if we go to Sao Paulo, we'll make an exhibition with Jockey Cultural. 
Um, secondly, usually our festivals really spread around the city. So we want to paint the city in various ways, um, make it more colorful, um, but that's also like difficult to, to, to make it feel good for people because there are like some points in the city where something is happening. So last year we decided and had the opportunity to have this one space, which is close to here, um, where everything was up. So we were 30 artists painting, um, at one time there was the, the music, um, everything was happening at one, at one point, which was really exciting for us to experience. So after that, we thought we want to connect this kind of like, we want to distribute and paint the city, but we also want to have like a main spot, something like that. So this year we decided to put all in one district for this, we um, chose the 16th district. Um, now I will show you some, um, designs of the walls, which will be painted this summer. Um, and the locations, there will be, um, 10 walls for the 10 years. So here we have Afinoa, um, Gera One and Guillaume Fon. Um, if you will want to know more about someone, I can give you some information later. We have Yesio from Indonesia, Cleo from Colombia, Lidania from Colombia. Um, Daniel Mayim is also like, um, come from the connection to the, um, from Choque Cultural. So over the years by developing our project, we also get more and more in contact with, with other projects. So we have done some things with Street at Belgrade, um, already and like happy to have this connection and, and also like exchange of artists and all that. So uh, one of our national artists, Bro Isa. Um, here on the right hand side, um, then logo Umule from Italy. Um, in Autocring, in the 16th district, we will use um, the Autocring Brewery for our music festival this year. Um, so it will be a two days event. Um, one day hip hop and another day is like a today. That's how it came to be over the years. Um, next to the brewery, there's the gallery, the Schöne. This will also serve as a spot where a lot of things will happen, especially a workshop. So we'll have an art artist talk and rock party there. So coming to the workshops, that's something we implemented from the beginning of our festival, um, but also started to do it, um, during the year. So not everything is like just happening during this one week festival. No, we are, as we are growing, we we'll try to make more things and other walls also, um, during the year. So this serves as like kind of hands on experience for, for interested people coming in close contact with artists, um, which Stefan did a um, workshop with us last year. Um, here you see some photos, um, you see pretty exciting, um, in a break I heard there's also an institution doing it with, um, retired people. And we also try to include like this from. And the children level to, to like all people to include everyone and make people more excited about like public art and that's freedom. Next, um, this is also a picture next to the Schöne, there's Konstantin Hinterhof, it's also an institution distributing and producing, um, street art and graffiti, um, things we had, um, an event there, I think like four or five years ago, there will be the possibility also of meeting the artist next to just go where they paint and you will find all the information on our website and on our social media channel um you can go there hang around meet the team meet the artists and meet other people excited about street art so a big thing also is our um, art guided tours which we implemented also a couple of years ago so during the festival most people go there of course so we had like well, I think one year when there was this street art exhibition in, um, in Bean Museum, we had like one tour with more than hundred participants. It was pretty exciting. I stopping the road and left a lot of people going around. So this, these are photos from our last year from the place nearby, um, where we had this whole long wall, um, 
we were glad that last year, um, Toby, the guy here, the tour guide, is a professional tour guide and he's making all future tours right now. Um, as everything was happening at one spot, it was really nice to walk through and also see the artist painting. Like, for example, um, Jeff Coleman here painted this nice wall um, and every wall that was the artist around and they could chat with the artists and see them in the process. Um, I think 2017, we started also trying to map um, where our walls are and where things are happening. And we're constantly looking about new possibilities, how we can view that and internet. And, um, I think this place is, is the perfect, um, possibility for getting inspired and, and finding people and seeing new approaches, how you can map stuff, how you can make it accessible. So online VR and all that. So I'm really excited about that. I'm happy to, to see all these, um, uh, project of you guys. And then a few examples about our, our target groups who basically try to include everyone who is, who is in the public and also who is interested about art. Here you can see if you have more specific, um, names about, um, who, who will be there, who's interested and a few more facts. We try to like, um, find out who, who is participating, um, of course, mostly Austrian, Viennese. Sometimes we have people who visit our festival that travel from far away and stay a week um, in Vienna and it's always great to meet them. And so we also had a new and team member coming from another part of Austria because he was so excited about this for years and was always there. He even um, taught me some stuff about graffiti, um, so super interesting. Um, yeah, over the years, I think we managed to get like more acceptance of, of public audience, also of uh, politicians. And I have to say sometimes it's a struggle to make these things happen. Um, but I think the more people know us, the easier it gets. And so we have quite, quite a broad range of, of, um, or response of the public. So in a lot of newspapers and radio. Um, TV shows, um, especially in news, of course. Um, but also like, um, the internet, social media is a good way um, to see, to see our work and then to bring it also outside of Austria. Um, if we move more like, um, 10 million, um, sites, well, we can tell, I think it's always difficult to make these exact numbers, but, um, just to give you an overview. Here and um, to the end, a uh, few highlights of our year from 2015 on, um, it's always hard to say like, what is better work or something like that. We try not to do that, but if you're more interested, check out, um, our websites, our Instagram, you will find anything on, if you want to more, know more, um, just get in touch with us and maybe we can do a project one day. Together, or I think it's some more information. Thank you for your attention. Um, if you have questions, you can. So, thank you, Constantine. Um, at this point, you have questions. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you scout the walls for the festivals? Uh, that's really interesting because when I started to do this, um, I saw these black spots in the city. So when, when I was driving with the car from my city, like back in the day with my, with my girlfriend, I was always like, do you see this gray wall here? Do you see this wall? And she was getting really annoyed about it. But <laughs> when you get into it, you kind of get this sense of, of looking at, at the city and you always see like where the and potential walls. So basically we, we scout them. We look through the district in this year, um, and go, go to the owners, talk to them. Uh, and we also have like partners who support us in this. So some institutions who have a lot of, um, buildings and they can also promote it to us or people write us, um, an email and like, Hey, I, so all is, are you interested in that? 
kind of like, so there are various ways, but basically we see something exciting and we go there and try to, to get it. Thanks. So next question. Yeah. Uh, how is the city of Vienna reacting to this? Is it working giving a great part? Yeah. So uh, first of all, then as I explained, um, they're interested more and more because they see we do something and we change um, like the appearance of the city. Um, they also support us by funding. Um, I would like them to be more involved in a way, just for a record. <laughs> but um, yeah, they they try to support us in in various ways, and yeah, we're in close contact with a lot of institutions. So. Okay. And which uh, I can ask you yeah. what is the question which and what is the artist uh, connection point? <laughs> uh, um, there are a lot of different. Um, places where you can go for different things, but basically the MS7 is, is the kind of um, contour, mm -hmm. which is, I think, the main, main interest point here, but what was your interest in, in getting, like, politicians who, who also have, like, influence and who maybe want to support um, this project. So now we, we're planning a big project with the United Nations headquarters in Vienna. And therefore, we had also like support of the um, of the mayor and of two ministers. So hopefully, that will be realized this summer as well. Um, but there are also different institutes like the districts, for example, are also like a major um, interest point for us, um, especially for the last year. Um, this this um, big big festival in one district was heavily supported from the district. So we're really happy to get this possibility. Lilian? I had two questions here, just to reply to both of them. Okay. <laughs> Connection with the city and the United Nations of Neurons. So. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I missed this, but um, how do the, the artists get selected? I mean, do they have to send you something and then you choose the 10? best ones or whatever or how is the selection process um basically um, it started from us reaching out now we have a um, website where people can apply so trying to standardize it and it's getting more and more the more <laughs> people know us the more um access apply so we have i don't know like a list of 150 artists right now who wrote us and are waiting like they want to take and I think it's a mixture of, of everything basically, but there is this, this standardized, um, application process where we see, um, there are also some, I think, hand picked version, but we are a team of 10 to 15 people right now. And so it's also like a really diverse, uh, field, like from, from the people who look at these artists. So it's always like really exciting when I talk to my colleague and I'm like, wow, I like this artist so much. And she is like, I don't like it so much. <laughs> and she's talking about that one. And so it's always like interesting to see all these different influences and, and subjective views of art. And so it's also starting with that a big and exciting process. Hatch, um, is just that you spread it with my opinion, a little bit to a project in, in Taylor that is called Museo Asiel Abierto or Open Sky Museum. And it's also like related to do huge artwork and like yes. like murals. It's, it's um, cheated. Yes. Okay. Um, there's a lot of places in Chile where we have that, and it's it's quite nice. It makes the neighborhood nicer. Um, but also like from the policy perspective, it's like also kind of changing the identity of the neighborhood. Um, and I was wondering here if there's some like intention of developing an identity uh, through this work of art, or if it's like, uh, or if you see that response from from the from the audience, from the neighbors, from from the people. I think the aim in the first place is not to create a new identity. So what we tried over the last years is also like get involved and, and get great contact between artists and, and their surrounding. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say it's more about um, reproducing or making it um, um, accessible for people, like what is the identity of the place? Because I think in a big city like that, everything is like really anonymous. So mm -hmm. everybody knows each other and 
Um, so we try to pick up stories from 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 the district, from a uh, Kretzel, um, to include that um, into into the artwork. So it's like the other way around. I, I would say it's like the intention because you asked me about the intention. The intention is more the other way around. We want to mm -hmm. present place more, mm -hmm. but of course it's creating it's creating it in another way. So I think a good example is like a lot. Of, most people like the project, especially if they know more about it. And on the other hand, some people are like really skeptical and they're like, wow, what are you doing? Kind of. And almost all of them after, after the final result come back and they're like, wow, it's awesome. Like, okay. So I think it's also, of course, a new identity, but mostly received pretty positively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Maybe like, is there any specific model that they yourself you you as an organization you as a prestige sector as an That's the end goal. Like I'm imagining something big like the cost may have some recently, something like that. So oh, Corey, we we have I think we have all these these buildings. <laughs> um, I think big big projects um probably the biggest war we we're trying to do is the United Nations at the entrance of the United Nations headquarters. Um, it's a really big one, and it's um, like a big goal for us right now. Yeah. Um, but there are also other places, like for example, um, in Augarten, there's this big um, tower, a gray, ugly tower. I want to paint it, but then it's the discussion about national identity, remembering what, what, what to, to do it or not, and like so many different perceptions and arguments about it. So it's also like really a hot topic, I guess, painting like something which symbolizes a lot. Of course, it's exciting to do it, but on the other end, some people are against it. So always a discussion. But I think that's the development of, of society and of city living spaces, like this process and the kind of like democratic way of coming together and decide what we want to have and what not, and which way can we work together and find solutions for having a nicer city and, and more livable cities. So, so if everything that gets created is legal, right? You have the permission to do this. So are there also um, people that say that they cannot collaborate with you because it is legal and they would want to do better the city one? They want to collaborate, or you mean basically that yeah, they, we are they not said, yeah, when it's legal, it's not what I want to do. I want to create only illegal stuff. Yeah, I think that's a, also an interesting part, but also in the, in the break time, we had this discussion, and also in the, in the speakers before, we saw, okay, graffiti and street art is viewed in so many different perceptions, and I said, like, okay, I don't see a difference, and Liliana said, there is a lot of difference, so... I think that's what, what represents the culture in a way. So there are some graffiti writers who probably would never collaborate with us because they say we do something else. So there are a lot of collaboration going on, but there is also like different views, different perceptions. So I'm sure there are some people who cannot or would not collaborate with us. So, but there are other projects doing that more, this kind of stuff. Or, what they do it on their own anyway, so they're bombing a train at night. I can't participate in this kind of activity. So but uh, having that in the walls uh yeah. that you have already there is like other graffitis illegally done on top of it or yeah. are mainly in um I think there was a time period where there was a, a local crew which was like really battling against us. We tried to, to find ways to, to make it happen. And I, I don't know, no, there is not much going on. But it was exciting to have, like, even if we didn't want to come into this area, it happened in a way. So uh, you see, okay, now we're really part of the scene. Uh, we'll get to about it as well. So there were different ways to integrate it. So um, we tried to support them in a way, 
we were um, integrating, like uh, we asked artists, we're like, hey, there are a lot of uh, tags there. Maybe you can do something with it. So it works where they integrate it and graffiti scroll ups tags into the artwork. I think some accepted it. Some said still, okay, you painted over my tag. So in the end, we are also like scanning the walls and see like who's running there. And also getting in touch with artists and say like, hey, we want to do this wall, it's okay for you. But probably there are some names I would not cross, so. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I have one more. And, 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 and all of this, all of these, um, these creations are made, is there any kind of effort to keep them, let's say, um, nice and shiny or do you let them just decay like you would probably let them um, We let them decay basically, but of course it's, you know, interested that they stay as long as possible. So I think it like, makes a difference to like the local um, graffiti, which is on a wall accessible for everyone is like doing a wall, which is 30 meters high. There's almost nobody like going to touch it especially in these heights. So it stays in the beginning for a longer period. And then it really depends on what materials you use, what, what, what is the technique the artist is using? Um, is it in which direction does it face? Does it face the sun, which decays the color much easier? But sometimes we covered it. If the artists want to cover it, some want to do it. Um, but there's after the production finished and um, there's no involvement basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm um, thinking about such a large festival. Do you actually try to work uh, with the local community? And I don't mean uh, working with kids and uh, um, retirees. I, I mean like, okay, you decide you want to do like Two buildings, or I know that you did a couple of murals in the same park or something like that. You actually work with the local community so they get this impression that it belongs to them, so they would keep it, you know, nice and clean longer, or they would appreciate it more. Just like, uh, is there anything that's kind of outreach mm -hmm. with the locals in, in a certain area? Um, well, as I said before, there is some outreach. Of course, not in in every case, but in some cases, we also got like the the impulses from people saying like, "Hey, there was this interesting person living in this building in this area," and then talking to the artists. Of course, we we want to promote art and artists, so we are not going to artists say like, "Please paint that." It's more like about collaborating with them and suggesting, "Hey, we have this story. Maybe you want to do something with it." So that happens, especially if the building is famous or named after famous person or something like that. So we try to do this. I think we want to go more in this direction than we did before, but in some ways we do it to it for sure. So also what like the the project on the EU level, which we applied for, is also like trying to integrate like more in social social environment, uh, minority groups, and how we can work with them to, to, to have this identification uh, identity process of, of the certain region. Mm 